this week's episode, I want to show you guys how you can set your tolerances properly to model for 3D printing and actually have your parts fit in the end. Hey guys, David here and welcome to Make a Software. The weekly series in addition to my project videos where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY projects. This here is the frame of my Cryo PC, which is a big uh, custom 3D printed PC that I built. And you can see that uh, there are many, many different pieces that I mean to 3D print, uh, since they were way too large uh, to print on their own. And having a look at how they join together, you can see these two packs, and they are to locate them to each other. But how did I make sure that these will fit in the corresponding holes? As with 3D printing, you know, not, not everything is perfectly precise. The main thing that you have to know to uh, create things that fit together is tolerances. Here, the radius of these pegs here is 4 millimeters. If we have a look at the corresponding hold, you can see that it is 4.125 millimeters in radius, which means that there is a 0.125 millimeter gap all around uh, this hole. And this shredding theory uh, allowed them to fit together perfectly. You can also see that I added a little chamfer here, and that is because corners sometimes don't get printed perfectly. And adding a chamfer just makes sure that there's uh, no little bulge in the corner that prevents you from fitting the two parts together. Now, these parts actually did not quite slide together perfectly uh, without some post-processing. And let me explain to you why. Here we have a very uh, basic model with just some holes drilled in it. This will be 3D printed like this one, uh, with the, this being the top and this being the side. If we have holes like these ones here, these 3D print great. And you just need to set the right hole diameter and they will fit perfectly. However, holes like these ones, they are a lot harder to print. Generally, you want to avoid using support materials in holes as it is basically impossible to clean and remove. One way is to just model the hole the size you want it and then use a drill bit to open it up later and this way you will be guaranteed to have a perfectly fitting hole. But that is kind of a pain and uh, an extra step. The other option is to just model the holes bigger so that you know in the end it will fit. Let's start off with these holes here. Right now you can see that the radius is 1.5 millimeters. That's because I modeled them exactly 3 millimeters, which is uh, what I want them to be in the end. However, if you print them like that, the 3mm bolt will not fit through. What we can do now, though, is to model them slightly larger. On this right one here, I defined this diameter as 3mm plus tolerance. And tolerance is a parameter that I set in here. Right now, this is at 0mm, but if we set this to 0.2mm, for example, then this hole now has a 1.6mm radius and will probably fit a 3mm bolt with most 3D printers. Another way to do this is to select the face you want to change and use the press pull or Q feature uh, to change that. And let's go minus 0.1mm and then we can see that the radius here is also 1.6mm. How much larger you need to make your hole for your print to still fit is something you're going to have to find out for your specific 3D printer. There are tolerance tests that you can print, like this one here, that have two uh, mating faces uh, that uh, go together and uh, then you can find out your tolerance. For holes where you just have a standard part fitting into a 3D printed part, you might want to divide this tolerance by two, but for me, uh, on my uh, printer, the 0.15mm uh, tolerance is perfect. But uh, this is on the Prusa i3 Mark III, which is a quite decent printer. However, if you have something like an Ender 3, maybe 0.2 or 0.25 millimeters is what you would need. But if we move on to these side holes, just uh, adding the tolerance, which is what I did here, uh, might not result in a printed hole that fits your screw. And the reason for that is, well, the bottom here prints perfectly. Up on the top, uh, we have some quite steep overhangs. And with most 3D printers, uh, your overhangs will droop down slightly. Even if you have a great 3D printer, having overhangs and bridges will droop down slightly. That is just basically a matter of physics. One way to get around it is to uh, pull this out instead of 0.1 millimeters, we can do minus 0.2 millimeters. And now this hole is significantly larger and will probably fit in the end. But there might be some side-to-side -side slop and uh, it might actually uh, have your screw setting slightly lower because there is more material on the top uh, than on the bottom. There is a way to get around this and that is to model your hole something like this. This is the same uh, hole with the tolerance added but on to top instead of having the regular circle continue we have this angle. 
This one here is uh, set at uh, 42 degrees uh, compared to horizontal, which uh, would uh, be considered in most slicer a 58 degree overhang, which uh, is considered fairly printable on most printers. Now if we start printing here in the bottom, everything is perfect, and then we start getting to overhangs, but it's still a very printable overhang, and we never get to extreme overhangs or even bridging. This means that this hole will be printed more or less exactly like it is here. Maybe at the top this overhang will droop down slightly, but that's fine, uh, because uh, there is a lot more space here. Now of course this is not a round hole in the end, but if you're just using fasteners, uh, then this is probably perfectly fine. Another added benefit is that we have, if you have a complex model where we want to use some support material and other generated supports, if you have a hole like this, it will automatically also put support material in here, which you generally don't, don't want. Uh, even if I'm printing the hole like this, I do not want support material in here, as it will be impossible to remove. But having it like this, as long as the angle of this face is below your threshold for support material, there will be not be added support material in this hole, but in all the other areas where you actually need it, there will be automatic supports. So I hope that these uh, basic tips help you out to model parts that actually fit together in the end, as this is a really satisfying thing. If you have any other tips and tricks, you can leave them down in the comments for other viewers to see. And if you liked it, leave a like and make sure to check out all the other Maker Software videos where I show you many, many more tips for 3D printing and stuff like that. So with that, thanks for watching and see you guys next week.